Oh, sorry, I started. <laughs> um, welcome back. This is a little podcast for us on homeostasis. Um, big word, but it simply means that um, we maintain a relatively stable internal environment. So all those things we've talked about, glucose, water, oxygen, carbon dioxide, all these things need to be in certain amount inside our bodies, not too much, not too little. And our homeostasis is what we describe as maintain these in a normal state. Um, when we're sick, when we have a dis-ease, our homeostasis is out of, out of whack. Um, so this is, operates essentially on what's called a negative feedback system. So the stimulus causes a response which acts in the opposite direction to the stimulus to bring the uh, material back to where we want it. So if glucose is rising in our blood, Sugar in our in our blood, um, a message is sent to the hypothalamus, which then sends a message again via a nerve back to the pancreas, and in the eyes of Langer and in the better cells, insulin is produced. Insulin enters the bloodstream, and it causes the liver, muscles, and other cells to take up glucose and make it into glycogen. So the glucose starts to fall. So we've got an opposite reaction to the uh, stimulus that caused it. And of course, if it falls too low, then we've got too little glucose and we go through the whole process again. Nerve message goes up to the hypothalamus. Hypothalamus sends a nerve message to the alpha cells in the acid langer in the pancreas. The alpha cells release glucagon. Glucagon causes the cells that made the glycogen earlier to break it back down again and release it as glucose. And that goes on all day. Two negative feedbacks constantly working together to maintain a relatively simple, normal glucose between 4 and 5.5 micromole of glucose per litre of blood. So negative feedback systems are really important. Um, we have two systems for doing this. We have the hormones and also our nerves. So in animals, each hormone has a relatively particular specific function. They work together in many places, but essentially somewhere in the body, a hormone will be released. So you might be looking here at uh, the thyroid and parathyroid glands. That hormone may then um, trigger a change in the adrenaline causing the kidneys to make more or less urine and we obviously secrete more urine or less urine. So these things are working all the time. They have a specific, because they're hormones, they're, they're proteins, they have a specific site on them which has a chemical connection to a specific site on the, um, the uh, organ or, or gland it's going to work on. So the effect of hormones tends to be reasonably long lasting slow because it relies on the blood system to move them around. Um, so we use hormones to regulate glucose, salt, heart activity, protein synthesis, hair follicle development, adolescence, as you're all going through right now with lots of hormones racing around, uh, milk secretion, pregnancy, calcium levels, water levels, mood, metabolic rate. Hormones are busy doing all sorts of things to you all the time. We also have a nervous system and the nerves are made up of this central nervous system, the brain, and then the nerves down the notto cord, down through our spinal cord. And that's our central nervous system. And it's sort of like a, a CPU on a computer. It processes information and works out what to do with it. And then it gets that information from these peripheral nerves, the peripheral nervous system feeding into that central nervous system. Decisions are then sent back via the peripheral nerves. So we have a, a receptor, maybe here on the end of our finger. It receives some information it sends that sensory information oops, where's it gone? along a sensory nerve into the central nervous system. Central nervous system, system decides it's time to lift your hand off that hot plate and it's going in, sends that message back down and effect a neuron or a motor neuron that causes the muscle to contract and you stop burning yourself. Nerve responses are really quick and uh, short-lived. And of course we have lots of sensory organs. Uh, that's a, a glass eye, but looks quite unnerving, doesn't it, when you look at it? Um, so you're used to the idea of eyes and ears and tongue, nose, and mechanoreceptors in our skin. All these things collect information from the external environment. But we also have lots of, um, which I should, sorry, I should make up. We also have lots and lots of uh, cells within our body which regulate all those other things like glucose and oxygen and carbon dioxide. Um, the nerves, the nervous system is made up of these things called neurons. And they have a particular structure. So we've got the nucleus within a cell body, all these dendrites reaching out either to other nerves or maybe to receptors and getting information from the back of the eye about changing light conditions. 
that passes that information down this axon to uh, the synaptic terminal or the axon ending and it pass that information across as a neurotransmitter across this synapse to the next thing. Could be a gland, could be a muscle, could be another nerve. And we also have this insulation along the axon made up from Schwann cells creating this thing called myelin. Um, and the action potential is actually quite a, an interesting but difficult thing to understand. We see sodium and potassium ions changing place along the nerve. And then it requires it. So normally your nerve is set at what's called minus 70 microvolts. If there's a disturbance, then if it's strong enough to go past minus 55, here we go again, um, past the threshold, then we get an action potential set up and that passes along the nerve releasing, allowing sodium into the nerve, releasing potassium out of the nerve, and that just runs like a, like a nerve impulse along the axon. And so it's, it's electrical, essentially. Um, the brain controls all of this. We've got this wonderful structure, and deeply embedded within it are the main endocrine glands, the hypothalamus, pituitary, and thalamus, and the pineal gland. And so the brain and these major glands all work together to coordinate what you do with the information you receive. How do I respond to changes in my external environment? It's getting cold. I might go put some pants on soon instead of sitting here in my shorts. Um, but I'm starting to feel that, so I need to go do something about getting warmer. Um, it's also listening to my internals, and it's getting towards dinner time. It's probably thinking, hmm, time we do something about organising dinner. So I can get some more glucose into my system, but in the meantime, I best release some glucagon and release some of that glucose you stored up after lunch. So all that goes on. But also, it's all about learning and memory as well. How we experience things, how we respond to certain stimuli and learn whether that was effective or not. If we're lucky enough, we survive that response, learn from it, and next time do things differently. Or, if it worked, do things the same. This is all that memory and learning the brain is responsible for. We also have things that are protective. And of course, it's all, it's all about keeping us alive, meeting those um, requirements of life we've been talking about. And so we have this thing called a reflex arc. So the classic is take your hand and you put it on a hot surface. If your nerves are working well enough, you can't hold, well, you can deliberately hold your hand there, but it's pretty hard to do because your whole body is saying, no, get that hand off that hot surface. And so here's our, oops, it going again? here's our skin receptor. It's feeling the heat. It passes this information along the sensory nerve, or the afferent neuron, into the spinal cord. We don't use the brain in this case because it's, we want to get there back fast. So this interneuron passes that onto a motor neuron, and the motor neuron, or the afferent neuron, comes back to the muscle and causes the muscle to contract the hand. And so we save it from being burnt. Happens in a, you know, less than time that it takes to describe it, that's for sure. Um, <clears throat> and that is homeostasis. That's how we go about making sure that we are always safe and our internal and external environments aren't going to harm us.